For this part I want to cover collision maps and Toad's tool. For the collision map I've prepared this thing. Um, I will import this now and then I will show some problems that you might not expect with this thing. So, yeah, it gave me an error because some of the textures were too big. It doesn't really matter, it just makes them look really blurry and shitty because the importer scales them down manually. So one thing we would want is to be able to walk up these stairs, but we can't. It's just this wall stopping us from doing so. And these flowers are pretty stupid too. We want to walk through them. And also we can't grab the sledge, we just fall off. So what we do is, we make a second version of our thing. We want, that's the collision version, we want this flower to be non-collisionable, so we just remove it. I mean, it's the collision and we don't want it. Then we want to be able to walk up these stairs, so what we could do is we could make this a ramp on the collision map. Let's see how that goes. We don't really need textures on this either, because we won't see it. This is just a collision map. And then we want to make the ledges grabbable, so for that I will make these edges straight down. And then I will run the cleaner once again. So I will export this as alpha UVA. No particular reason for that. I just have to make sure to select it over here. And if I now import it, it will all be just as we oops, wrong one. Just as we wished it would be. We can walk up the stairs, we can walk through the stupid flower, and we can grab onto the ledge. So for Toad's tool, the first barrier is, you have to click into this once. There's no hint for it, you have to click into it once, otherwise it won't do anything. The screen pretends to be a loading screen, but it really isn't. So. Select your ROM. I will go over all the buttons in order. Um, before I explain anything, you want to put this to expert and also this to expert. It will happen just now. So, alright. Um, this isn't really a button, this is not a button either, and this one is obviously the save button. This is the button you use the most. You will want to save after every change you made, because this program crashes so often and it's super frustrating if you have to do everything over. Uh, launch ROM. This button will only work if you have activated shell integration in Project 64. To do that, open Project 64. Options, settings, shell integration. Um, edit textures. This is an easy way to change textures. Uh, it's pretty simple to understand. You will see something like this. The left side is just the colors, and the right side is the alpha channel of the texture. And you also have to draw the texture like that. So for example this would be a 32 times 64 texture you will have to import. You can change Mario size, but it's just silly. You should enable High Poly Mario, especially if you are wanting to replace the Mario model with My Replacer because it deletes the low poly model and it would just create errors if you wouldn't do this. 
you can change colors, but I won't do that because most of the time it just looks silly. Um, preferences. Yeah, you can do this however you want. If you are using earlier Toadstool versions, you should enable skip checksum check. But in the newest version, you don't need to. You also get the script dumps. Don't look into this until we are at the advanced part of this tutorial because this is more complicated stuff. Just numbers. You have different kinds of objects in your custom levels. You will be missing two types of objects. The macro objects and the special objects. But they are basically the same as 0x24 objects but they are more limited, so we don't want to use them anyway. There's no purpose for that, except maybe saving space in the ROM, but that's irrelevant to us. We have the music track. This is the music ID we were able to select in the object importer over here. You can change it after importing by changing this number. I will put a tutorial for warp destinations in the descriptions because for some people they are really hard to understand and there are people explaining this better than I do. Uh, don't mess with this or this if you are inexperienced. Especially don't mess with this. And also don't mess with this. Um, don't touch this. You can touch this though. This is the terrain type you can select here. Um, it won't tell you how the terrain type is called though, so you will have to guess. Um, also don't mess with this, you will just crash your ROM. Now let's go back to 0x24 zero, zero objects. We get a lot more options with these things, I will explain them soon. First of all, you should put mode to hexadecimal, otherwise you will get these really weird decimal numbers and they are ugly to use for most things. You have keep on ground, that just, you see the box, just move to the ground. And also if you move it to the side, the box will keep on the ground, but I never use this option. As you see, it's down to 0 0.2 FPS, because this apparently has to calculate very much, and just use the drop to ground option, which is the same, but without lag. I wouldn't use this. I don't even know what it's supposed to do. The drag speed just controls how fast you can move the cursors around. If you put it to the rapid, it moves super fast. If you put it at hurdle, it moves super slow. At startup, it's apparently a bit glitchy and was unrabbit but showed turtle, but whatever. Still, still, we expect glitches, bugs everywhere. You have the front camera, which is useless. You have the back camera, which is useless. You have the top camera, which can be used in some situation. You can see the level from the top. The bottom camera is uh, useless. The left camera is useless. The right camera is also useless. And you have the flight camera. You can move around with this in your level. You will almost never want to do this. You can scroll in with this. You can move around with this. and change vision with this. If you put this on select object, you can select objects, but I don't have any screen. See? If you put it to rotate cam, you can't select objects. Then you have the orbit camera. This is the one you will want to use for most of the things. It follows your object, and it just gives nice vision. You can rotate around your object. Super nice. Yeah, as you might have already noticed, this one allows you to move your object. Depending on the camera, it also changes the direction in which you are able to move. This is the up and down. This one rotates your object. I will put a model here so we can see this at least. This one is for y-axis. This is for x and z-axis. You have the camera. You have I think I've already shown this enough. With the Act option, you can control whether your object appears or not at the currently selected Act. For example, if I put it like this, it would appear on the 1st, the 3rd, the 4th, 
and the fifth act, but not on the second or the last act. I could, I can do this however I want. There's only one exception. If the first five stars are selected, it will always show, no matter what. This was made so you could have objects even in levels that don't have an act selector. Because you would always have zero act and no object would show. Then you can select object combos. Object combos are basically just model ID and behavior ID shortcuts. For example, if I put, let's see, flame red, it sets model ID to flame red and behavior ID to burning. You can also select model ID separately from a list of model IDs. Or I can alt click into this and put, for example, a pipe, whatever I want. Um, this is behavior IDs. You can also select either from a list or you can put your own behavior ID in, but you will have to somehow know which behavior IDs you want. For that I gave a behavior scripts file on my Google site, I will link that one. There are a lot of behaviors you probably won't even need, but there's also something else. Um, you might have heard of my more objects match and you will probably want to use them in your hack. So someone made this compilation tool that basically shows all the model ID and behavior combos possible once you applied my patch. For example, for the node block I could put this to 7B and this to 174 and I would have a node block. Now we have behavior parameters and they basically determine how the object will behave. For example for the node block we have bparam1 does nothing, bparam2 changes the height. Let's put this to ff so we go insanely high. ff is the highest number to 255. It goes... Oh yeah, let's put the rotation back to zero otherwise it will just look weird when I test it. Yeah, coordinates are obvious. You change Y, object moves up. I'm actually surprised Toad's tool didn't crash so far. Uh, something you might notice with the objects from the more objects patch, they won't show up in Toad's tool. That's also because Toad's tool is pretty stupid. But don't worry about it, they will still work. You see, I'm getting super high. And then we still have the culling and the collision map option. Um, if you put culling on, you can see through walls when the tool thinks you should be able to see through them. It's Toad's tool, so it's not too reliable, but sometimes it's useful. And then we have the collision map. It shows the collision. For example, you see this ramp. Uh, we drew a ramp over this in the collision map. But it obviously won't show in the visuals, but if we put the collision map on, we see our ramp. Wireframe is useless. Yeah, you can change the renderer to whatever you want, but it doesn't really do anything for the tool. 